This is uh, mummification, y'all. Um, we're not going to be mummifying a person, of course. Uh, that would be a little too traumatic for most people. So we're going to be mummifying the, uh, something that is the same kind of substance, animal tissue, and something that most people are familiar with and have seen, and that's a chicken. Now, one thing I need you to do is remember the weight before. Now, luckily, on a chicken, they put the weight on it, okay? And the weight is... 4.49 pounds. Please, visitors, write that down. 4.49 pounds. We're going to weigh this afterwards and see how much of this is water. Because we've all heard that before, right? Our bodies are mostly water. You know, your brain is mostly water, that's for sure. But um, you'd be surprised, and I've actually shown you examples of how skinny a person gets when they've been mummified because the water's all gone. So we're going to see just how much of this thing this supple kind of chicken is water. All right, first of all, I want to get some gloves on. Um, I mean, chicken, any kind of processed chicken that's raw, there is the possibility of salmonella, which is a kind of disease that can get you kind of the flu-like symptoms for a while. So I just want to do this, and um, I'm, of course, going to wash my hands afterwards. All right? So let's open this up. Okay, ready? Let's open this. And as I said, it's just a chicken from the store. Something you've probably seen before at home, your mom cooking something or your dad cooking something. Nothing very different about it. Okay, it's pretty big, I like that. Um, first of all, um, inside this one. Okay, anyways, here's what's gonna happen. All right, we're gonna, of course, uh, we got to follow the steps that they would have used. If this was the real person, it would, he would be on a table right now, and that table would be slanted. Okay, our table is going to be right here, and actually that tray on the bottom is slanted. Okay, the first thing we would do is we would take great care in showing respect to the person because they believed that the three parts of the soul, which were the the baka and ak, are in there, in the heart, inside this body. So you have to ab absolutely respect that and pretend like they're there, that they're alive. Okay? Now, if they're on the table, the first thing that has to happen is they're going to be washed. They're going to be washed because we want to get rid of all traces of bacteria. Bacteria. bacteria is correct, which is the source of all kind of rotting. We want to stop rotting. We don't want that to happen. And unfortunately, the minute somebody dies, they start to rot. And that's a good thing or else we'd have piles of dead things everywhere. Okay? So there is some bacteria on this. There is going to be naturally. And uh, what we want to do is do our best to try to wash that off. So, in the uh, ancient Egyptian tradition, what would they have used? Wine. They would have used alcohol in the form of wine. What kind of wine? Palm wine. Palm wine, good. Palm wine. Palm wine was made from essences or, or parts of palm trees, the hearts of palms, and they were fermented and it made a type of wine. It doesn't taste like grape wine, it's a different kind of thing. I'm going to use white wine vinegar, which is the same kind of astringent properties to it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash as much of this as possible that I can cover. Okay, so I'm going to pour this all over it. I don't care how much I use. I'm going to let it drain right away. I'm going to put a lot on the inside. I'm going to put a lot on the outside. I'm going to make sure every bit of the inside and outside is washed. Right now the bacteria is dying off by the millions because of this astringent kind of uh, antibacterial property of the liquid. Now on the inside, I'm going to swish it around a lot, and I'm going to get in there. I'm not going <coughs> to feel weird about it because this is the job of a priest. Okay, so I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to take out any kind of bits that are in there left of the person's innards because by this time, if, this, if we were at this stage of the process with a human, we would have already cut them open. A guy dressed as who would have come in the room? Anubis. Anubis would have come in the room, drawn a line down the body. Everybody would have turned away. One guy would have come forward with a knife, cut the guy open, and then he would have been chased out of the room because... He, it's against he, the law to hurt another human human body, alive or uh, dead. Exactly. Both of you were right. Uh, it was against Egyptian law to harm another Egyptian. But you got to cut a person open to do this. Okay? So he's been cut open. Now... Uh, we got to decide what is going to be saved and what is not. Now, if this had its organs all in it, we would uh, keep only one thing inside. Heart. The heart. The heart. We would keep the heart inside there. We would throw away the kidney. We would throw away the, the bladder. We would throw away, the, well, first of all, yeah, we've thrown away the brain already. 
and we would throw away the kidney, uh, I've already said kidney, we would save the liver, we would save the lungs, we would save the stomach, and we would save the intestine. intestine. Now the intestines are the source of most of the bacteria, we want to get that out first. So by this time, let me do one more washing with the palm wine. Pour this around. Now, of course, the real thing would also have a head in this guy, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, now, we are going to assume that the heart is inside. We want to gently lay this body down for just a temporary period of time right there, with absolute respect. Now, at this point, there will be prayers being said all around. There would be what being burned? Incense. Incense, Incense burn. being burned. Resin. They would probably burn something like myrrh too. Yeah, resin. Because honestly, dead animals and dead bodies do not smell too good. So you gotta have something to control that. Okay, I'm gonna change gloves right now so I can get a little bit of grip. And we're gonna start mixing the substance that does the real work. What is that substance called? Salt. Natron. Natron is the word for the mixture. Salt is the biggest ingredient of it. Now I have three different types of things here. I have two different types of salt. And I have one extra ingredient that I've learned to add. All right, first of all, I'm going to use kosher salt. Kosher salt does not have iodine in it. Most salt that we use on fries and stuff like that has iodine in it, and a lot of people don't know why. Well, if a human doesn't eat enough fish and shellfish, okay, there's, a stuff, there's stuff in it called iodine. All right, it's a natural substance that's in these things. And if humans don't get enough, they can get goiter, which is a gland in your throat, can actually blow up the size of like a softball. Okay, we don't see too many people walking around with those today because there's so much iodine in salt. It takes care of that, okay? I don't want iodine in it because it can, it can uh, interfere with the process of mummification. I want pure salt and that is kosher salt. This is simple salt that you've seen a lot. It's a little bit more powdery though I've found. Okay, but it's just regular salt. All right, I'm gonna start my mixture. I'm gonna pour a whole box of that. I'm not gonna be stingy with the salt. I'm gonna use a lot of it. Now just imagine if we were doing a human. There'd be a lot more than that, okay? There would be a, had to be enough to make a mound over the person. So that's a lot. Something I've learned to add is uh, this. It says ice cream salt on it. It's also known as rock salt. This is kind of cool, actually, because it's crystallized in large chunks. And it kind of looks like jewels. It kind of looks like jewels. Oh, yeah. We used that at school and made some yeah, we Something interesting that salt does to ice is that it lowers the freezing temperature. Everybody know what the freezing temperature water is? 32. <laughs> 32 degrees. Everybody listening? When water and salt mix, when water and salt mix, the freezing temperature of that water lowers dramatically. So it needs to get colder to actually turn into ice. This is why when I lived up north that there was ice on my front step. I would actually buy these in, in, in the, by the carton and I would sprinkle this on the ice, come out a few minutes later, and that would be all slushy or kind of half melted. It's because when salt touches ice, it changes its freezing temperature all of a sudden to a lower degree, so all of a sudden it unfreezes. You could do this at home with an out with salt shaker and a piece of ice. It'll start melting really fast in front of you. I don't use it for that property. I use it because it's a little bit hardier, holds its shape a little bit better. So we're going to mix this in. Straight in there. Okay, I'm not going to be stingy. Now, here is baking soda. Baking soda does two things for me that I've learned to be good in here. Uh, it's, uh, it, it soaks up water. It helps soak, soak up some of the dripping. Some dripping is going to happen and go into the pan and go down just like on the table in ancient Egypt. But uh, this also absorbs a little bit of the odor. Now, what causes odor and rotting? Bacteria. Bacteria. Salt kills bacteria. So there's really not going to be that rotting, nasty smell that you would think would happen. It's not going to be like that. But something this salt does to tissue, besides pulling the water out of it, it breaks down fat. Now, there's fat in this. There's chunks of fat right there. I'll show you in a little bit. And it breaks it down and kind of liquefies it. Now, that does have a little bit of a smell to it. But it's not a rotting smell. It's just a, most kids say it's just a different kind of smell. Oh, One that yeah. you're not, you don't really love, but it's not gross, gross, you know? So uh, that's going to happen. The baking soda is going to kind of soak up some of that. So I'm going to put in a whole thing of this. And I'm going to kind of mix it up. And let's save some for the top layer. Now, with my hands, if I had any cuts on my hand, it would be kind of stinging, and that might sting a little bit. But, oh well. Mix this up. And this is Natron. Now just imagine how much you would need if you're doing a human being. Okay? 
this is a fairly small amount. Okay, this is a nice, good, uniform batch of nature. I don't want a whole section of rock salt, the whole section of baking soda. I want to mix it all up uniformly. Okay, very good. Now, okay, now I want to get some gloves on real quick. And we'll start the actual mummification process. It will start mummifying pretty quickly. Okay, but it does take a long time for that salt to penetrate through all the parts of the of the chicken. So it's going to take a while. How many days did it take for a human? Six, to four, 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 and I'll be checking it periodically, and we'll see exactly how many days it would take for this. All right, step one. Step one, I'm going to lift up. By the way, here's the fat I was talking about, okay, this yellow stuff. The interesting thing that you're going to see is, first of all, what we're going to see is not much on the top because it's going to be covered with salt. We're not going to see this guy again, okay, until, until it's done. Um, I might pull him out just to check on him, and you'd see him then and how he's looking, but you're not going to see him definitely like this again all soft, supple, filled with water, uh, but the next time when we're done with it, it's going to be hard. You're, I'm going to be able to knock on that leg and it's going to sound like it's wood, okay? Um, but the fat will remain kind of rubbery. The rest of it, muscle, turns very hard like beef jerky. So this thing will be like a bowling ball, you know? If I dropped it, it'll go thunk, <laughs> not splat. All right, so um, here's what's going to happen. We're going to see a lot of fat here eventually. It's going to turn kind of a dark yellow-orange. The muscle parts with no fat are going to turn dark red, okay, and then they're going to get hard. All right, so how do I cover every bit of this? Well, first of all, I've got to use the body to my advantage, and I've got to close up this hole with one hand, and I want to pour all the way in there. I want to make sure every part is touching natron in there. So I'm going to just grab piles of this, and I'm going to pour it in, okay? Pouring natron in here, and I'm stuffing it in, just like a Thanksgiving turkey or something. Natron touching everything. Okay. I don't care if I make a mess, it's all right. Okay, I'm going to hold that right there. You need help, baby. Not yet. I'll help you with not yet. Okay. I'm going to lay this here. Actually, I'm going to do two of them. I'm going to Put one like that. These rags are pretty inexpensive, so I can use a lot of them. Actually, I like that. Okay, I want to cover the bottom, or else the natron's going to go right through the grates of the bottom. I don't want all my salt to go away. So I'm going to line the bottom with cloth. Okay. Now, I'm going to take some natron and I'm going to put it on the bottom because that would be bad if I laid my chicken right on the cloth and nothing was touching the bottom of it. If there was no natron touching the bottom of it, then the bottom would rot possibly. So I want to cover, I want to make a bed of natron with this. And I might actually need to make more. I don't know. Let's see how far this takes us. Okay, I'll make a little cozy bed for this guy. And lay him down right there. Now some is spilling out, that's okay. Because I'm eventually going to cover them completely up. Okay. Now one important thing is I want to make sure the kind of wings are out a little bit so I can get all of the natron in there. Now I'm going to just pour, pour, pour. Okay, say goodbye to uh, this guy. We're going to name him also. We're going to give him a good name. Bobby. You guys have that privilege too. Let's name him Bob. 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 Okay, here we go. Now. Okay. Now, I want to make sure this is pretty uniform around there. I'm going to check the wings. I'm going to check the legs. And make sure the legs don't have any kind of creases in there that it's not touching anything. Now, I'm going to open up some more salt here. I'm going to pour kosher salt right on it. Bye-bye, AJ.
Hi, Jay. Sort of, kind of, not really, but that's okay. Yeah, we don't like you drinking. What happens if we eat a mummy? Could you actually eat it, Mr. Wright? Um, you got to think of uh, days past. What was the whole purpose of beef jerky? It was to preserve meat. And then you would get water on it again, soak all that salt out of it. And then, literally, it would be un, un beef jerky, you know, and you could actually cook it. Supposedly, technically, you could take this out if it's completely mummified months later, put it back into boiling water, boil out the salt again, and you'd have your chicken back. I don't think I'd ever try it, though. I know, that would look I'm not cool. sure if I, I I'm not sure if I would want to eat that. I don't know. Me either. Okay, now, a couple of the bits of the legs and the edges of there are, are exposed. That's not bad. That's okay. They still have salt that has touched it, that's on it, that's going to work. But I want to try to cover up as much as possible. Now what I want to do, so he's completely covered. Everything's good, except for those two little bits. I'm going to take a layer of baking soda. I'm going to kind of coat the whole top. So that any type of liquid or odors that kind of comes out the top, this will kind of mask it or soak it up. Okay. And uh, you will be hungry. Okay, I'm hungry. Not bad, not bad. Let me pop this in. Pop that in a little bit more. Now, this is actually mummifying right now. Remember how fast I told you when I barbecue with my dad, I would take the salt shaker and I would sneak up and I would put it on my yeah. steak? And how fast that water would start coming out of it. Well, actually, this is starting to pull water out of it right now. First of the skin, then it has to penetrate into the muscle, and it's going from the inside out, too. But it doesn't happen overnight. Now, what are we going to see? We're going to see some dripping. What's the color of the liquid that comes out? Pinkish red. Pinkish red. Pinkish kind of reddish. Pinkish reddish, kind of like watery, cool. Like hot, hot, oh, high and see, high see. Fruit punch. You said well said. Okay, yeah, it's like watery fruit punch, and it's gonna start dripping out the bottom. Now, my tray there, my tray there. This is a dish strainer, and it's actually slanted, so it's gonna kind of go towards one area. That's okay. All right. So this is actually a finished mummification for the next probably month. I'm gonna check this probably mid February. Okay, like around Valentine's. I'm gonna actually pull him out. And you guys have the privilege of seeing him. I'll, pr I'll pull him out in your class and we'll check him out, see how he's progressing. Um, if we had a scale, we could even weigh him. What's his current weight? 4.49. 4 4 4 4 we'll check his weight in a month and see how much of the water has left him. Um, and that's about it. Thank you.